Hello and welcome back. In this video, we will introduce the Kalman filter. The Kalman filter has some very important applications in engineering, and Kalman filters are widely used in navigation systems and robotics. The Kalman filter is an estimator that allows us to estimate the state of a dynamical system from available measurements. The theory behind the Kalman filter is very elegant, and the filter lends itself to multiple interpretations. These include the minimum variance estimator approach and the maximum a posteriori estimation method we'll discuss later. In this lecture, we shall state the Gauss-Markov model, and this will allow us to derive the equations of the Kalman filter. So let's get started with the Gauss-Markov model. Consider a linear dynamical system of the form xt plus 1 is atxt plus gtwt, and yt is ct xt plus vt. Here xt is the system state, yt is the output vector, wt is an error term that is acting on the dynamics, and this is known as the process noise, and vt is the measurement error. This is also known as the observation noise. We assume that both w and v are random variables and they have a zero mean. Both are temporally uncorrelated. This means that the covariance of w with wl is zero whenever t is not equal to l. And the same holds for v. We also assume, for now, that both w and v are normally distributed and they have a variance covariance they have variance covariance matrices q t and r t respectively later we will discuss what happens if we drop the normality assumption lastly we assume that w t and v t are uncorrelated this means that their covariance is equal to zero moreover the initial state is considered to be unknown, and it is treated again as a random variable with a, a known mean and variance, and it is uncorrelated from W0. Before we proceed, we should emphasize that the state and the output of the system are random variables. The system is assumed not to have an input for the sake of simplicity, but the results can be extended to the case where we have linear systems with an input acting on them. Before we give a more technical discussion of the evolution of the system states and outputs, let's go through this example. Consider this linear dynamical system where the process noise has this variance-covariance matrix. The initial condition, x0, is normally di distributed and has a known mean and variance. The density function of x0 is shown here. Then we can show that x1 is also normally distributed, and so is x2, and so is x3, and so on. We see that the states of the system are random variables. Let's see how we can determine the expectation and variance-covariance matrices of the states xt starting from x0. The system dynamics is given by xt plus 1 is atxt plus gtwt. We define x tilde t to be the expectation of xt. Then we can show that x tilde follows the dynamics x tilde at time t plus 1 is equal to at times x tilde at time t. Define also p subscript t to be the variance-covariance matrix of the state, xt. Then, pt plus 1 can be determined from uh, pt via this recursion. The derivation of this formula is quite straightforward, and I'll leave it to you to go through it. The only interesting part is that we have used the fact that xt and wt are uncorrelated. You can easily prove that this is indeed true. So this is the Gauss-Markov model. There are a few exercises you can try for yourselves. 
Firstly, you can determine the covariance matrix between two states at times t and l. The second exercise says prove that xt is a Markov process. This means that the conditional PDF of xt plus 1, given all the states from time 0 to time t, is equal to the conditional density given just xt. In other words, if we know xt, the knowledge of any of the previous states offers no useful information. This justifies why we call xt the state of the system. This is not true for the system output. The sequence of outputs is not a Markov process. Exercise 3 is an easy one. We have a linear system and you are asked to write a bit of code to determine x tilde 20 and the covariance between x20 and x50. Exercise 4 is very similar to one from the previous section. So that's all about the Gauss-Markov model. We can now move on to the Kalman filter. We start at the beginning. We start at time 0, where x0 and y0 are jointly normal random variables. The expectation of x0 is x tilde naught, and the expectation of y naught can be found to be c naught times x tilde naught. The variance of uh, x naught is p naught. Since y naught is an affine mapping of x naught, the variance of y naught can be found to be c naught p naught c naught transpose plus r naught. The covariance of x0 with y0 can be determined using the definition of the, co the definition of covariance and it's found to be p0 times c0 transpose. By combining all this we find that the pair x0 y0 follows the normal distribution with this mean and this variance covariance matrix. We're still at time zero, and suppose we measure y naught. What is x naught given y naught? That is to ask, how can we estimate x naught given y naught? Since the pair x naught y naught is jointly normal with this mean and this variance, then x naught given y naught is also normally distributed. Previously, we showed that the conditional expectation is the minimum variance estimator. Here, we will use the conditional expectation of x0 given y0 to estimate the initial state x0 from the measurement at time 0. We denote this by x hat subscript 0 at 0. The first 0 refers to the fact that we are estimating x0. The second 0 means that we're using the information that is available up to time zero. This means y not. By virtue of the normality of the pair x not y not, the conditional expectation of x not given y not is given by the mean of x not plus the covariance of x not with y not times the inverse of the variance of y not times y not minus the mean of y naught. This is a formula that we stated in the previous uh, video lecture. Of course, the variance of y naught, the term, the yellow term that we have to take a, an inverse of, needs to be non-singular. For that, it suffices to assume that r naught is positive definite. The conditional variance of x naught given y naught is given by this equation. Note that the conditional variance does not depend on the measurement, does not depend on y0. The procedure of estimating the state at time t using the available measurements up to that time is known as the measurement update step of the Kalman filter. Next, having observed y0 at time 0, we want to estimate, or rather to predict, x1. To that end, we'll use the conditional expectation of x1 given 
why not? All we have to do is propagate the current state estimate through the system dynamics as we did in the statement of the Gauss Markov model. We find that x hat 1 0, which is the expectation of x1 given y0, is given by this equation x hat 1 0 is a 0 times the previous estimate x hat 0 0. Likewise, we can determine the estimator variance sigma 1 0, which is the conditional variance of x1 given the value of y0. This is given by this equation. You can confirm that both equations are correct as an exercise. These two equations define the time update of the Kalman filter. Let's now move on to time t equals 1. Same as before, we will try to determine the joint distribution of x1 and y1, and we will use the fact that we, we know we have measured y0. Firstly, the conditional expectation of y1 given y0 can be easily seen to be c1 times x hat 1 0. You should verify this as an exercise. The conditional variance of y1 given y0 is given by this expression. And the conditional covariance between x1 and y1 given y0 is given by sigma 1 naught times c1 transpose. Overall, we have determined the joint distribution of x1 and y1 given y0. Once we obtain a measurement y1, we can estimate x1 using the minimum variance estimator, that is the conditional expectation of x1 given y0 and y1. So all we have to do is condition the distribution of the pair x1, y1 given y0 on y1 to obtain the estimate x hat 1, 1 which is exactly the conditional expectation of x1 given y0 and y1, so all the information that is available up to time 1. And this is a function of y1. We also obtain the conditional variance-covariance matrix of x1 given y0 and y1. And of course it's important to make sure that this matrix here is non-singular. This is the case if R1 is positive definite. The measurement update and the time update steps can be applied recursively, leading to the equations of the Kalman filter. The way we use the Kalman filter is that we start at time zero, where all we know before we obtain the measurement of the system output is the mean and the variance of the initial state. Then once we obtain the first measurement, we apply the measurement update, which is the minimum variance estimate of x0 given y0. We then use the time update to predict the next state and its variance. At the next time instant, we obtain a new measurement of y1 and we apply the measurement update. And this will estimate x hat 1, 1. We will then use the time update to predict x2 and its variance, and we will keep applying the measurement update once a new measurement becomes available, and then the time update, and over and over, over and over again. This is the Kalman filter. Note that the Kalman filter is very efficient. It estimates the conditional expectation of xt given all measurements from time 0 to time t using just the last measurement. We can say that the Kalman filter is a recursive minimum variance estimator. Just as a reminder, we are denoting by x hat tt the conditional expectation of xt using all measurements y0, y1, and so on up to yt, and we denote by x hat t plus 1 at t the conditional expectation of xt plus 1 using the measurements from y0 up to yt. That is to say, x hat t plus 1 on time t is a prediction of the next state. We define sigma tt and sigma t plus 1t analogously. Some interesting observations regarding the Kalman filter 
First of all, the variance covariance matrices are updated according to this recursion. And this is a Riccati recursion. We know that the Riccati recursion, under certain assumptions, converges to a certain steady-state steady matrix. And this implies that there must be a formulation of the Kalman filter that looks like an infinite horizon linear quadratic optimal control problem. More about that later. Number three, all covariance matrices can be computed without the need to obtain any system data, that is, they can be pre-computed. Fourth observation is that the state estimates are essentially conditional expectations, and therefore the Kalman filter is the best estimator, in the sense that it is the minimum variance estimator. A few other topics you may want to look into later are the square root form of the Kalman filter, which is a numerically stable implementation of the Kalman filter, the steady state Kalman filter, and the convergence properties of the filter. So that's all about the Kalman filter for now. In the next video lecture, we'll use the Kalman filter to design an estimator of the position of a vehicle using GPS measurements. Thank you very much for watching, and goodbye!